In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily DIY your own front porch doormat slash welcome mat with the help of your Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants your Cricut and crafting channel where I post Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're just trying to figure out this daggone Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because you, my friend, do not want to miss out on a single Cricut minute, especially during the month of December because I am kicking off a 12 part video series that I am calling the 12 days of Craftmas. So not only will you all get 12 videos, so 12 Cricut Christmas themed projects, but you all also get 12 chances to win big because I am giving away a huge Cricut themed prize package that will include a Cricut maker a Cricut Joy for the winner to then hopefully give away to someone else in their life, a huge, and I do mean huge bundle of StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, a 30 foot roll of transfer tape, a pin pin weeding tool, a squeegee, and some other little goodies thrown in there as well. Now to get registered to win, there will be a Christmas or holiday themed phrase hidden in each of these 12 videos. Now it is extremely important to watch these videos from the very beginning beginning all the way up until the very end because throughout the course of the video one word of that phrase will be popping up one at a time whenever you see that word pop up on the screen just jot that down and once the video is completely over then it texts that into me so just shoot me a text at 502-878-7189 if you're not a member of my texting community already then just by texting me you can actually go through and join and as long as the phrase is correct then you will be registered to win. Just remember that it is a Christmas or holiday themed phrase and it needs to be an actual full phrase to get registered to win. Last time I did something similar around Halloween, a lot of people were sending me in just one single word and, and that that's just, that's not how it works. <laughs> now I do not want to forget those who are outside of the US. I found out the last time around that so many of you all who live outside of the States had, had some issues Issues trying to join my texting community and I obviously do not want that so for those who live outside of the states and only those who live outside of the states you can actually shoot me an email instead just shoot that email to mcpgiveaways at gmail.com all right, so now on to today's project. I am so excited for this because y'all, we are doing a DIY welcome mat slash doormat, whatever you want to call it. But we're also doing it in multiple colors. And I think that this project is just gonna be so, so, so cute. So let's actually just go ahead and dive in and we'll start off with the things that you're gonna need to make this Cricut Christmas magic happen. So first things first, we are gonna need some Flex Seal. And I'm using this red and white flex seal right here. Now, so many people last time around asked me if you had to use flex seal to make these mats. And the answer to that question is no, you don't you don't have to use flex seal. That is just my method of choice. I've had the absolute best results when using flex seal and this stuff lasts forever. Y'all, my mom's doormat that I made her the doormat itself obviously has a little bit of wear and tear, but wherever the flex seal is, it looks basically like brand new. I'm not even joking. It is so, so good. This stuff is a liquid rubber. Most people think that it's a spray paint and it's just not. It's a spray liquid rubber and it's meant to fill in gaps or, you know, seal cracks or whatever you want to do with it. And personally, I feel like it's the best choice for making these doormats, but again, that's my opinion. Next up, we're gonna need some sort of a mask or a stencil or whatever you wanna call that. And I'm actually gonna be using a permanent adhesive vinyl for that. So basically you can just use any type of permanent adhesive vinyl. You can also use a stencil film vinyl as well. But if you do opt for using a permanent adhesive vinyl, just use colors that you don't really foresee yourself using a whole lot because 
the color of the vinyl has zero bearing or effect on your actual project. We are also going to need a doormat. Now, this is from Ikea, and it's actually the smaller of the two different types of doormats that they carry. This is the 16 inch by 24 inch version of their core or coir type doormats. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. You can really do this, this project on most different types of doormats as well. It doesn't have to be this one right here. However, it works really, really well on this style of doormat right here. I just personally absolutely love it. Y'all, I almost forgot my favorite transfer tape of all time. This stuff is basically magic in my book. I love this stuff. And I basically tried everything that there is out there on the market. And this stuff is a godsend in, in my own personal opinion. Now, I know before a lot of you all go off in the, in the comment section asking for the link, literally everything, everything that I list or mention or use will be linked down in that description box below. Not only that, but I also go through and try to find any promo codes that I can and also list all those for you all down in that description box below as well, because I love saving money. So just as simple as that. And last but not least, we are obviously going to need a cutting machine, right? Now I am using my Cricut Maker mainly because it's already sitting out here on the desk. You can absolutely use a Cricut Explore. You can absolutely use a Cricut Joy. However, you could run into some issues with the Cricut Joy just because of the size of the machine, that's all. Other than that, you can really use any type of cutting machine as long as that cutting machine software works with SVG cut files. Oh, and speaking of SVG cut files, I'm actually gonna hop over to designbundles.net and show you all the SVG cut file that we're using for today's project. All right, so here we are on designbundles.net and here is the SVG file that we're using. Now this is currently marked down from 460 down to 299. So I can't make any promises of what this is gonna be, or the price is gonna be whenever you go and check this out yourself, but currently it is on sale. Now, as far as this SVG file goes, this basically means that we are transforming that very plain Jane Ikea doormat into a letter to Santa. I mean, can you just imagine how cute that's gonna be? Like I am so here for it and I am obsessed. So let's go ahead and hop over here to Cricut Design Space and we'll get started making our design. All right, so as you can see, I already had this image downloaded from designmendals.net and then uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you are new to this Cricut world, I do not want you feeling overwhelmed at all. I actually made a video specifically on how to download things from designmendals.net or fontbundles.net and how to get those uploaded into Cricut Design Space. So I will link that video for you all right up here as well as down in that description box below. But as for this image, what I'm actually wanting to do, first of all, is come right over here to the right hand side of the canvas to where the layers panel is. And I'm gonna go through here and just start ungrouping a lot of these different groups. So I'm gonna select this one and then right above it, right up here at the top of the layers panel, I'm gonna select ungroup. And basically I'm gonna ungroup everything except for individual words or something like this where it says Santa Claus. So that's gonna stay. But this right here, this is also gonna stay. All right, so as far as this group right here, as you can see, as I clicked on that, this little blue box popped up around it right over here where it's actually residing on our canvas. This is meant to literally to show you all that you all can put in your own family name, your kids' names, your grandkids' names, whatever you all wanna do here. Now, I'm actually not gonna be using this, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out. But as far as this grouping right here, I'm going to ungroup that as well. Now, this right here, since this is all together, I'm just gonna leave that group, that's perfectly fine. So all of that is still, that's still okay for right now. All right, so what I'm actually gonna do now is create a template. And y'all know I love my templates. To me, it's just the easiest way to go about resizing things for the surface that you're applying this to. So to create a template, I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page. I'm gonna click on shapes and I'm gonna click on square. And to actually make this the same dimensions as our doormat, I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And first things first, I'm going to unlock this little padlock just like so. And by unlocking that padlock, we can now have a different measurement for the width versus the height. Whereas before, if we changed the width, it would have automatically changed the height to be the exact same measurement. So for that width, I'm gonna put in here 24 for 24 inches wide, which is what that doormat is. And for the height, I'm gonna put in here 16 for 16 inches tall, which is exactly what that doormat is as well. And we can go ahead and lock that little padlock back. 
Now the color of this template doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but I always like to, to change the color of this to just kind of get a visual of what this is going to end up looking like. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top left hand corner, click on this little color swatch, and I can just change that to brown real quick. And then I'm gonna right click this doormat and then select send to back. And as you can see, this is a, it's a little bit too big for our, our canvas here. So I'm actually gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand corner and zoom out a little bit. All right, so I'm basically just gonna go through here and select the different elements and then basically place them onto this doormat however I see fit to make it still look like a, like a letter to Santa. So let's go ahead and grab this little red column right over here. I'm gonna keep this on the left hand side of the doormat and then just grab this little resize handle right here and then drag that outwards like so. There we go. All right, so for Santa Claus itself, I'm actually gonna drag this over here. I'm gonna resize this one as well. Same thing for the North Pole. And for this little, the frame of the stamp, I'm gonna pull this over here as well. Make this bigger. Same thing for this little snowflake. Now, as far as this little stamp right here goes, this actually has a bunch of really small letters. I mean, as you can see here, this entire thing is a little less than four inches tall, which I mean, trying to imagine how, how tall each of these letters are, that's gonna be really difficult to try to transfer over to a doormat like what we're using today. So as much as I hate to, as much as I would love, like absolutely love to keep this, I'm gonna go ahead and click this little red X and delete that out. All right, so basically we have everything placed onto our doormat template in the way that it's actually gonna be in real life. So we really don't need that doormat template anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then come up here towards the top left-hand corner and click that little red X to delete that out. All right, so basically what we need to do now is figure out how we're actually gonna be cutting each of these sections out. So most people don't have a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. However, most people do have a 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat like this one right here. Now, although this is a 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat, the maximum cutting size for this mat is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. So what I'm actually gonna do is create another template to resemble the maximum cutting size of this particular cutting mat and basically figure out what's gonna cut out onto what cutting mat. So I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side of the page, click on shapes and I'm gonna open up a square. Again, the color of this does not amount to a hill of beans, but just so it's a little bit less confusing for you guys at home, I'm gonna change this to green to resemble our cutting mat. And I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says size. I'm gonna change that to 11.5 and hit enter. And since that padlock is locked, it went ahead and changed the height to 11 and a half as well. All right, so I'm actually gonna right click this little template and then select send it back. All right, so just from taking a really quick look at this, obviously this postage stamp right here is gonna be cut out onto the same cutting mat. So just to make this part a little bit easier, I'm gonna click and drag over that frame of the postage stamp and the snowflake itself. And then I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says align. And then I'm gonna select center. There we go. And while both of those elements are still selected, I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select attach, which means that they're gonna be cutting out onto the same exact cutting mat, just like they're seen right here. So that's gonna make things a little bit easier. Now, as far as everything else goes, uh, Santa will be cut out onto a mat and I think I can actually get claws to be cut out onto the same exact mat as well. Yeah, I believe I can. So as you can see over here on the layers panel, all of this is basically grouped into the same little grouping. I'm actually gonna go ahead and ungroup that, move this little template out of the way, and I'm gonna click and drag over Santa, make sure all those letters right here are selected. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select attach. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for claws. All right, so Santa and claws, this will be able to cut out onto the same exact mat as well. Now, as far as this little column right over here, I'm actually gonna have to slice this into two different parts, I believe. So before I actually uh, slice anything out, I'm actually gonna duplicate my template. So I'll have another one of those on hand. And real quick, I'm actually gonna select our column like so. Now this is made up of multiple different layers. So I'm actually gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And weld basically fuses or merges all of those layers onto one solid layer as one solid image. So basically what we can do now is slice this column into two different parts. And whenever you're using slice, you can only have two layers selected, which is why we had to basically weld the red column together. I, I hope this is making sense. So let me go ahead and click and drag over both of those elements. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice. 
There we go. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete out that little template. The green right here is just remnants from that. And here is our column that is now split up into two different parts, which means that we can cut this out as seen, but just a little bit differently on the cutting mat, that's all. I'm gonna grab this other cutting mat. I'm gonna right click it and then select send to back. All right, so what we need to figure out now is how we're gonna place the North Pole onto a cutting mat. Now, you could go through here and slice it in half. However, what we could do also is just grab this little rotation handle up here at the top right hand corner and rotate this and this should fit perfectly onto this cutting mat like so. And the last step for the North Pole is basically attaching these all to where it's actually gonna be cutting out onto the cutting mat exactly the way it's seen right here. So while that's selected, I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and selecting attach. All right, so this template is no longer needed. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. All right, so as we can see here, here is how everything is basically positioned out. I'm actually gonna rotate claws to where it's cut out like so. And I'm gonna move these little columns a little bit further apart, just for a little bit of space. Now for this next layer for Santa, I'm actually gonna move this little postage stamp a little further away as well, just to have a little bit of extra space. All right, so that's basically gonna take care of all of it. So we're gonna have three mats total, and then we'll take this and apply it to our doormat. Now, once this is all done cutting out, what I'm actually planning on doing is taking our doormat outside and giving it a really good coat of this white flex seal right here. And yes, I'm basically gonna spray over the entire mat with this flex seal. Now, here's the thing, wherever we're planning for our designs to actually be, in those areas, I'm gonna give it an extra, extra good amount of the Flex Seal. And that'll make a little bit more sense here very shortly. But as for right now, let's go ahead and click on continue. I'm gonna turn on my Cricut Maker and then we'll get started cutting. Now, if you are using a Cricut Explore device and you're not seeing this page right here, just turn your dial over to custom and then this should pop up for you. But for the vinyl that I'm actually cutting out today, I'm gonna to come right over here and select browse all materials and then do a quick search for premium. And then we'll select premium vinyl right here. And then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select done. All right, so while the rest of this is cutting out, I'm gonna go ahead and start weeding out this vinyl. Before I do, I'm actually gonna flip over this mat and peel the mat away from the vinyl itself instead of the other way around. This really just helps prevent any damage from occurring to the vinyl itself. All right, so as far as our transfer tape goes, and this is actually a medium tech transfer tape. It's not super, super sticky. However, since we're gonna be trying to get our decals or our vinyl to stick down to a core doormat, we really wanna make sure that this is basically just sticky enough to apply it to the doormat and actually be able to leave this on the doormat itself. So I'm actually gonna stick this onto my, my hoodie a couple times, maybe on my jeans a couple times, just to actually make this just a little bit less sticky. All right, so here is our doormat. Now, not sure if you can tell on camera or not, not sure if it's reading on camera, but there are certain parts of this doormat that I definitely went heavier on compared to the others. And the reason for that is because those are the areas that I will be applying my vinyl to. And this vinyl is going to act as a mask or a reverse stencil, whatever you wanna call that. Now, once I apply this to the doormat, get all these on here, I am then gonna coat the doormat with the red Flex Seal spray this right here. So basically the letter itself or the envelope itself is gonna be red with these little white accents popping through it. Now, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people and rightfully so asking me why I covered the entire doormat with the white if basically there will only be certain parts of the doormat showing the white coming through the red. And the answer to that question is, this is literally the last doormat that I had available to do this with. I didn't have a doormat to run tests with or anything. And I personally did not want to run the risk of the red flex seal showing up differently on the brown base versus the white base. 
I didn't want there to be any kind of color variation or color difference or anything of that nature. I'm sure it probably wouldn't make that much of a difference if any at all. But again, this is the last doormat I had for this specific video and I didn't want to run that risk. So take that for whatever that's worth. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my transfer tape, the sticky side facing up, and then take the Santa or whatever decal that you're wanting to use and apply that right over top of that transfer tape. Then I'm gonna grab my squeegee tool and then burnish that down. And then peel the backing paper off of the vinyl. All right, so now we're going to actually apply this to the doormat very carefully. We want to you know, make sure that the vinyl itself is sticking down to the doormat, but we also want to make sure that we can actually pull the transfer tape back up. All right, so now I'm going to very, very carefully and very, very slowly start pulling the transfer tape back. And actually one thing that I want to do before I go any further, because I actually forgot to do it before I started applying the vinyl, is I'm going to grab just like smooth, firm, hard surface. And for this, I'm just literally using the top of a Rubbermaid container and literally just going to try to slide this right over top of the doormat. Because here's the thing, if we try to carry all this out, basically covered in this very kind of uh, thin, fragile vinyl to some extent, there's a really good chance that that vinyl is wanting to curl up or just become a hot mess. And we don't want that. So with that actually being on a surface like this, this will be much easier to carry the entire thing back out again. Whenever spraying your Flex Seal onto your doormat, you really wanna make sure that the nozzle is pointed straight down towards the ground. You don't wanna be spraying at an angle because you could risk actually getting that Flex Seal up underneath of that vinyl stencil or that vinyl mask rather. And after spraying the Flex Seal, I waited about 45 minutes or so before I removed the vinyl. Now, if you all liked today's episode, or if you just learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me if you went ahead and stamped that like button, as well as dropped a little comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things help me out tremendously here on YouTube, and I honestly cannot thank you enough. Also, if you are new around here, and you're also just wanting to learn how to best use your Cricut cutting machine, you may wanna consider stamping that subscribe button and then ring in that little bell for all of the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute. Also, I have started a brand new texting community where I send out texts whenever a brand new video goes live or whenever there's a really good sale on materials that you can use in your Cricut cutting machine. So if you have not yet joined that, you definitely, definitely should. Just shoot me a text at 502-878-7189. You could say, hey, hi, how are you? You could really say whatever you want to say. And as soon as you send that, you will get an immediate auto response, basically asking you to click a link, put in some information. And by doing that, you're basically putting your information into my phone so I know who I'm talking to. And from there on out, you'll basically get real texts, really from me, in real time. So it's something that's super, super beneficial. And so many people are obsessed with this texting community. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode. It truly, truly means the world to me. And until next time, stay crafty.